Hello dear children, welcome back to science class. Today we are going to begin with a new chapter that is chapter 3 of your textbook Digestive and Excretory System. First let us see what is digestive system. Have you heard of this word digestion any time before? Yes, let us see what it is. The food that we eat daily it cannot be used directly by our body. This food has to be broken down into small and as substances that are dissolved by our body. Only if this food that is in the complex form is converted into simple form like how you see here, then only it can be absorbed by our body. So, the process of breakdown of this complex food into simple and soluble substances as you see here that can be absorbed by our body. This process is called as digestion. Now let us see which organs that are present in our body will help in the process of digestion. Mouth, food pipe otherwise called as esophagus, stomach, large intestine, small intestine, liver and pancreas. These are the organs that will help in the process of digestion. All these organs together is called as the digestive system. Now let us see the functions of each of these organs one by one. The first one is mouth. As soon as you keep the food inside your mouth, the process of digestion starts. So the process of digestion starts in the mouth itself. Incisors, otherwise called as the cutting teeth, will cut the solid food into tiny pieces. Now molars, that is the grinding teeth that is present in your mouth, will grind the food that you take. So after you grind the food, it looks something similar to this, isn't it? Yes. Now what happens? Saliva or otherwise called as the digestive juice that is present in our mouth will mix with the food that is chewed. Now which organ will help in mixing saliva with the food that is chewed? Tongue is the organ which mixes saliva with food. Now what is the role of this saliva? Saliva will help in the breakdown of starch which is a complex carbohydrate in the, that is present in the food to convert it into sugar. Sugar is a simple carbohydrate. So saliva will help in the breakdown of complex food that is starch that is present in the food and convert it into sugar which is a simple carbohydrate. Because we have already learnt that only if the food is converted into a simple form, it can be absorbed by our body. Now saliva will make the food soft and it can easily be swallowed. Now let us see what happens after we chew the food and swallow it. We chew the food and we swallow it and from the mouth it goes through the food pipe. Now as you see here in the picture, from the mouth the food goes into the stomach through the food pipe. This is the stomach and this is called as food pipe otherwise known as esophagus. Food that is chewed and swallowed will go through this food pipe to reach the stomach. Now let us see what happens in the stomach. So from the food pipe or otherwise esophagus, food has reached the stomach now. As you see here in the picture, this is the stomach. Stomach is a J-shaped organ as you see and it is otherwise called as muscular bag because the walls of these stomach are made up of muscles. Now what happens in the stomach? The food that we have taken is moved around strongly or otherwise it is churned and then it is mixed with the digestive juices that are present in the stomach. 
Now, from where does this digestive juice come in the stomach? Digestive juices are produced by the walls of the stomach. Now, what happens to the food? This digestive juice will break down the food, that is the complex food that we have taken into simple and soluble substances. So now, from the stomach, let us see what happens to the food. From the stomach, the food goes into the small intestine. Now, the food that has entered the mouth has now travelled through the food pipe or otherwise called as esophagus as you see here in the picture and then it reaches the stomach. Now, what happens in the stomach? We have seen that in the stomach, complex food substances are converted into simple and soluble substances. Now, this simple and soluble substances are now gone into the small intestine as you see here in the picture. So, the small intestine just like how you see, it is a long and it is a coiled tube. Now, what happens in the small intestine? Once the food reaches the small intestine, the digestive juices that are present in the small intestine will digest the food. Now, from where the digestive juice comes in the small intestine? The digestive juices are received from the liver and pancreas. Organs like liver and pancreas as you see here in the picture. Now, the process of digestion is completed in this small intestine. Now, what happens to this digested food? Let us see that. The digested food in the small intestine is absorbed by the blood vessels that are present in the walls of these small intestine. As you see here in the picture, this is just one part of the small intestine. And there are blood vessels that is as you see as thin red color lines. These are the blood vessels that are present in the walls of these small intestine. So these blood vessels will absorb the food that is digested and blood that is present in this blood vessels will carry the digested food to different parts of our body. Now we have understood what happens to the digested food. But what happens to the undigested food? Undigested food will go into the large intestine. This is the large intestine. So now let us see. What are liver and pancreas? Liver is an organ as you see here which is marked in red color. This is an organ which produces bile. Now what is bile? Bile is also a juice which helps in the digestion of fats in the small intestine. And pancreas which is another organ as you see here in the picture. This green colored one that is behind the stomach. This produces digestive juices. And this digestive juices will help in the digestion of carbohydrates, fats and proteins. So by now you have understood from the mouth how the food goes into the esophagus or otherwise food pipe and through the food pipe how it reaches the stomach and from the stomach into the small intestine and the digested food in the small intestine is absorbed by the blood vessels that are present in the walls of the small intestine and the blood that is present in the blood vessels will carry this digested food to different parts of our body and undigested food will go into the large intestine. Now we will see in the next class what will happen in the large intestine.